It's time to rate the Magic Kingdom restaurants. What do we love? What do we hate? And will your favorite get the spotlight? Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. I'm here with my ultimate ranking list of Magic Kingdom restaurants. We're going in alphabetical order here and giving each restaurant its due discourse. You get the pros and cons of each location and a rundown of who would enjoy the food and atmosphere for each restaurant and who would be better off skipping certain restaurants entirely, regardless of where they are on my list. Each restaurant is getting rated on a one to 10 scale, so you can think about skipping those lower numbers and save your stomach space for the perfect tens. Want to hold this list near and dear to your heart while you plan your Magic Kingdom day? Just head over to DisneyFoodBlog.com slash EveryMK and tell us your email. In return, we'll send you a PDF of everything I'm talking about today. Here we go, off to Foodland. Our first stop is Aloha Isle. Dole Whip fans, lend me your ears. If you're trying to track down the Disney Park's staple frozen treat, this is the other Adventureland Dole Whip location you're going to want to search for. While Sunshine Tree Terrace might have a lot of floats on their menu, Aloha Isle has a selection of specialty Dole Whip concoctions, both traditional and limited time only. They've also got other unique treats like the 50th anniversary Tropical Serenade made of pog juice, coconut soft serve, and an upside down pineapple cake pop. Seriously guys, this is so good that we've deemed it our favorite Magic Kingdom 50th anniversary snack to come out of this celebration so far. The Aloha Isle menu switches up often though, so if you do fall in love with an item here, there's a good chance it might not still be available come your next visit, which can kind of be a bummer. But if I've got to choose between the more limited options at Sunshine Tree Terrace and Aloha Isle, then I'll probably go with Aloha Isle. Pros here, Dole Whip Paradise. Unique and seasonal options keep things fresh. Cons, Favorite options may not still be available when you return, and there's no savory snacks served here. By the way, you can mobile order at Aloha Isle. Overall ranking here, 9 out of 10. Next on our list, we're headed over to Tomorrowland to Anti-Gravity's Galactic Goodies. Anti-Gravity's might be in Tomorrowland, but this isn't a counter service I'd call out of this world exciting. You're going to find pretty standard ice creams, shakes, and smoothies here, along with the occasional way more exciting seasonal items like the Adventure is Out There Cone, the Uncle Orville Great Big Beautiful Tomorrow Sunday, and the Pumpkin Spice Soft Serve Sunday. Those are all seasonal, of course. I definitely recommend checking out Anti-Gravity's menu, especially if you're visiting during the holidays or a big Magic Kingdom event just in case this little Tomorrowland location pops off with something exciting and unique. Otherwise, you'll probably find more adventurous sweet treat options elsewhere. Pros here, great for those looking for a treat with no extra frills, and it has fun seasonal items on occasion as well as milkshakes. Cons, not super adventurous for the most part, and seating is next to Tomorrowland Speedway, which can get rather loud and kind of stinky. Overall ranking on this, 6 out of 10. Next on our list, we're going to Be Our Guest Restaurant. Okay, I gotta admit, this one is complicated. Originally, Be Our Guest, located in the new Fantasyland portion of the park, was a quick service location where guests could dine in the Beast's Castle in one of three rooms, the Ballroom, the Rose Gallery, and the West Wing for breakfast and lunch, and then they could have a table service dinner, and that was really, really cool, and it still is really, really cool. I mean, it's not every day you get to explore Beast's Castle, but also meet the Beast himself as he wanders around the rooms of his home. Alongside Cinderella's Royal Table, this is one of the most beautiful restaurants you'll dine in on Disney property. However, Be Our Guest has since been switched over from a quick service slash table service experience to just a table service experience, which means a sit down restaurant with a prefix menu. And those prefix prices are steep. We're talking $62 per adult and $37 per kid for lunch and dinner here at press time. That's especially pricey for a meal that's honestly relatively forgettable at that price tag. Yeah, the French onion soup is great, and yes, the filet mignon isn't too shabby. Even the dessert trio is a fun way to wrap up your big meal here. If you tried the gray stuff, it's delicious. But all in all, the quality of food being served at Be Our Guest still feels very much like that kind of wedding banquet quality. There's nothing wrong with your banquet at your wedding. I'm sure it was delicious, and I'm sure you're paying a lot of money for it, but you get it, like corporate banquet, right? So my advice, this is more than likely gonna be a one and done experience for you, and if you can set your expectations early on and accept that you'll be paying more for the castle atmosphere and the beast character sighting than you will for probably the actual deliciousness level of the food, although I will say the mac and cheese is pretty good, then you'll probably still like it here, especially if you or anyone in your group is a huge Beauty and the Beast fan. Pros, gorgeous castle atmosphere, rare beast character sighting, and delicious French onion soup and mac and cheese. Cons, quality of the food is underwhelming for what you're paying, and prefix prices force you to pay for more food 
than you may want. Reservations are very, very hard to get. Make sure you get them 60 days before your visit. Overall ranking here, I'm gonna give it a seven out of 10. Okay, we're headed to Casey's Corner next. Casey's Corner is the baseball themed hot dog quick service on Main Street, USA. And folks, the options here can sometimes really hit it out of the park. If you're a pickier eater, you got a solid selection of traditional hot dogs. And if you're more adventurous, Casey's likes to switch things up with specialty hot dog offerings. Currently, they've got a 50th celebration hot dog on the menu, which is an all beef hot dog topped with strawberry bacon jam, crisp funnel cake pieces, and powdered sugar. I know that sounds super weird, but the savory and sweet options really complement each other well here for some reason. They've also got my beloved corn dog nuggets here that I love dipping into the classic plastic cheese sauce. If you're not a huge fan of hot dogs, then this probably isn't something you'll want to wait in line for. But if you do, then hot diggity dog step right up to the plate and don't forget to listen to the ragtime pianist outside the restaurant for a minute or two. Another quick tip on this one, if you and your kids are first in line for Casey's Corner, when it opens, your kids could throw out the first pitch of the day and get a free brownie. Pros here, great for hot dog fans and a good selection for picky and adventurous eaters alike. Cons, well, if you're not a hot dog fan, this ain't the place, fam. And this place can get packed with Casey's Corner fans, so instead of winding up for a pitch, you might be winding up for crowds. There's also some outdoor seating and a little bit of indoor seating, but not a lot of either, really, when you think about how many people want to eat here. So sometimes, read most of the time, it can be hard to find a seat. Overall, I'm gonna give this an eight out of 10. Next on our list, we're heading back over to Fantasyland to Cheshire Cafe. This inconspicuous little counter service kiosk can be really easy to pass up if you're trying to make your way from New Fantasyland over to Tomorrowland or vice versa. But if you're looking for a sweet treat between the two lands, Cheshire Cafe has one of my favorite Magic Kingdom pastries. The Cheshire Cat Tail is this cafe's signature item, which is a twisted chocolate chip pastry with melted chocolate filling and purple and pink drizzled icing. It's basically just like a chocolate Danish, but it's really good. I don't know why. The Pepper Jack Pretzel also likes to pop up here from time to time, and last time I checked, it was still on the menu. Hooray. So if you're wanting an item at this little cafe, make sure to go earlier in the day rather than later on. Since these items are pretty popular, they can wind up selling out before the official posted closing time of Cheshire Cafe. Pros here, sweet and savory options, and seasonal options are also served here, so be on the lookout. Cons, this can be easy to overlook and not find. The item you're wanting to order could sell out. There's not a lot of seating, and what there is is outdoors. And Bria wants you to know that the restaurant is based on the Cheshire Cat, which terrifies her. So I think I'm gonna give this one a 7.5 out of 10. I was gonna give it an eight, but since Bria's terrified, we'll go 7.5. Okay, we're headed to Cindy's house. We're talking Cinderella's Royal Table. If you've been watching DFB videos for a while now, you already know my hot take on this signature castle restaurant. This is a one and done experience for me, but I keep going back because I have to for y'all, right? So I feel you should try it. You're gonna be dining in the Cinderella the castle, the literal emblem of the park. It's gorgeous. The main dining room is decorated with Baroque style architecture, draped flags, high ceilings, lanterns, elongated window views. And you do get to see Cinderella right now, very briefly. Here's the thing. I've never been a huge fan of the menu options here. Again, we're going with like company banquet food here. If I had to pick some favorites, I'd probably go with the beef tenderloin and the major domo's short ribs. The chocolatey, hazelnutty, caramelly clock strikes 12 dessert is okay. But look, the items aren't bad here, they're just not worth the prefix prices. But now that character meet and greets are limited and many of the immersive dining experiences that brought this restaurant to life have been put to rest for now, it's hard for me to justify this one as something more than a one and done restaurant. And honestly, even when all the princesses were there, it was still one and done for me at those prices. And with just Cinderella and just to kind of wave and catch you later, yeah, it's, it's hard. That being said, this restaurant is super popular because it's Disney, you're in the castle, it's Cinderella. You almost have to do it, it's like the law. So if you're wanting to book your table, make sure you wake up early, 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 60 days before your trip, make a reservation on the My Disney Experience app or Disney website so you can secure your seat here. Pros, beautiful dining in the Cinderella castle. Best for those who are looking for the ultimate Disney-fied dining experience and you can't get breakfast here, that's a pro. Cons, expensive, like $5 signs expensive. And it's expensive especially for the limited experience right now. It's hard to get a reservation for, and the options are okay, but not exactly memorable when it comes to food. I am gonna give this one a 7.5 out of 10. Again, it's the law to eat there, but I wouldn't wanna do it twice if I didn't have to. 
Next on our list is one of my absolute favorites, y'all, so get ready for a high ranking here, Columbia Harbor House. If you ever wondered about Magic Kingdom's New England-inspired surf and turf options, you'll be happy to know that A, they do exist, and B, they're pretty tasty. Columbia Harbor House is a fast food restaurant located in Liberty Square. Here you're going to find options like the $13.99 trio platter that includes a combo of fried shrimp, fish, and chicken strips, as well as hush puppies, yay, and your choice of side for $13.99. Not bad deal for that much food, right? You're also going to find the classic lobster roll here, which we keep coming back time and again for a guaranteed delicious meal. The restaurant is not only affordable, but provides guests with a good portion of hearty food. There's also lots of indoor seating, including upstairs seating, which a lot of people don't know about, so it's pretty uncrowded up there. And if you're not a huge fan of seafood and you don't want your options limited to chicken tenders and various sides like fries and hush puppies, I don't know why you wouldn't want to just eat hush puppies all day, then you might want to sail on over to another quick service. If your group is pro seafood, then Columbia Harbor House will provide for palates both picky and not. And even if you don't like seafood, I'm not a huge fan of seafood and I love this place. So there you go. Pros, best for surf and turf fans, a lot of good food at a good price, great seating areas, lots of AC, lots of seating, and caters to picky and adventurous eaters alike. Cons, not a great variety for those who don't like seafood, but who doesn't like chicken tenders, right? Right, okay. Also, not a great variety for those looking for more plant-based options. And it's not the classiest atmosphere. Book a reservation for a table or signature restaurant for more of a fine dining establishment. But this one is pretty fun. One of my favorites, obviously, nine out of 10. Okay, next we're headed over to Cool Ship. There's not a whole lot to say about Cool Ship in Tomorrowland. It does its job, churros, soft drinks, sometimes there's extra little snackies there, so we give it props for that. But I gotta give it even more props for the cool scanner next to its kiosk. This scanner activates a cooling mist spray for you to stand under on those super hot summer days. It's not always on, but when it is, it feels really, really great and your kids are gonna love it. Plus, it's free. Pros here, snacks and mist. Cons, pretty basic. Not a whole lot to say about it otherwise. Overall, we're going to give this one a 5 out of 10. Not destination worthy, but useful if you happen to be there and need a cold drink. Okay, next on our list, Cosmic Ray's Starlight Cafe. Staying in Tomorrowland with this one. If I could just come in here to listen to the musical Astro Organ stylings of my dear friend Sunny Eclipse, I absolutely would. We actually have a DFB t-shirt that has the Sunny Eclipse tour schedule on it, in case you need to see that. We'll put a link in the description for that. But this is a Tomorrowland fast food, quick service, counter service location. So I do have to judge this place on the food too, just to be fair. Now, I think I like Cosmic Rays more than your typical Magic Kingdom visitor. It's always been a special place in my heart because they used to have self-serve plastic cheese and they had the best green beans this side of the galaxy. And this is a place that I can always go get my favorite chicken nuggets or chicken tenders. So they do have some pretty standard options, burgers, hot dogs, chicken sandwiches, chicken tenders, stuff like that. Sometimes they've got a turkey leg in there. Sometimes they've got a specialty seasonal burger. And sometimes they've got like one of those Boston markety half chicken meal things. Now, currently you can grab a Mission to Mars burger here with a cheese puff dusted bun, which was a fun and different take on the average theme park burger. You can also get the plant-based burger to the moon with a flour dusted bun, which is why would you put a bunch of flour on a bun? That doesn't taste good. Anyway, this will be a good stop for picky eaters, but I will say overall atmosphere can be a little chaotic here. Sunny Eclipse is the star of the show. That's a great room to sit in. Otherwise, this place is Tomorrowland chic and very, very loud and not gonna lie, it gets pretty stressful from time to time. So while you are sitting indoors, you do have air conditioning. It is not the same vibe as you'll get over at Columbia Harbor House where everything's sort of separated and there's different floors and stuff. At Cosmic Rays, it just kind of feels overwhelming a lot of the time. Maybe it's because Columbia Harbor House, fewer people know it's there, but Cosmic Rays is just kind of big in the middle of the park. Here's your burgers kind of thing. So maybe that's why. So pros on this one, it's great for picky eaters. Seasonal items can be really fun for those looking for a different take on the usually average fare here. And of course, Sunny Eclipse. Cons, kind of a chaotic atmosphere, loud, 
little bit stressful, not the best selection of plant-based options here, and the food is pretty average. It's not terrible, but there's no wow factor here unless you're like me and you're perfectly happy with a couple of chicken nuggets and some barbecue sauce. Overall, I think I'm gonna give Cosmic Rays a seven out of 10, although Bria wants me to give it a six out of 10, which is probably what most of you would give it. I'm gonna give it an extra bump because I have nostalgia about this place, but yeah, I would gauge yourself at like a 6.5 out of 10 is where most of you are gonna fall on this one. Okay, next on our list is the Crystal Palace. This is on Main Street, USA. It's had quite an identity crisis lately. Sure, it's kept its hold of its England Crystal Palace charm, but it's also kept us on our toes ever since the park closures in 2020. So before those closures, Crystal Palace was a breakfast, lunch, and dinner buffet. You could meet the 100 Acre Wood Gang, you've got Piglet, Tigger, Eeyore, and of course, Winnie the Pooh. But after the closures, the Crystal Palace reopened as a family-style a la carte table service restaurant, minus the character dining, minus the buffet. And honestly, it was really good when it was like that. The dining options were more limited, but I loved the Crystal Palace during this little span of magical time where it was an a la carte restaurant. It was delicious. I went twice during that time and I loved it. But the Crystal Palace has returned to its OG buffet roots and it's lunch and dinner only now, but you do get a buffet. You don't have the characters back yet, but you do have the buffet back. So if you're a buffet fan, then Crystal Palace will be a better place for you to go now than it was right after the closures. But if you're like me and you'd rather have like an a la carte, that's gone now, sadly. But I will say the buffet is a lot better than it used to be. They've got more interesting items on it. So I guess it's a little better than maybe in the past. Okay, it's prefix priced at $39 right now, and you can choose from prime rib, s'mores, tarts, mac and cheese, lots of seafood, you get the gist. And it's a lot of food and you can pile however much you want onto your plate as many times as you want to. So it is definitely all you care to eat. So pros on this one, best for those looking for a variety of options all at once, great for picky eaters. It's a super plus for kids under three because you can kind of get them their own plate. Whereas if you're in an a la carte restaurant, they have to eat off of mom and dad's plate. So those are the pros of Crystal Palace right now. Plus it's a great view of Cinderella Castle as well. Cons, the buffet setting can be off-putting for some, including me. If you're not quite ready to go back to kind of straight up buffets during the pandemic, that could be problematic for you. There's no character dining at this time, and it's not great for those on a budget. It's still a lot of money that you're laying down for that table service meal. If you're going with your family of four, you're still gonna probably pay around 100 bucks. So overall, I'm gonna give this one a seven out of 10. Next on our list is the Diamond Horseshoe. Now, don't let this copycat menu fool you. Though the Diamond Horseshoe over in Frontierland usually serves almost identical offerings to what Liberty Tree Tavern has to offer, they just call it the Saloon Feast instead of the Patriot's Platter. This Old West Music Hall restaurant is usually all about the barbecue. We're talking things like barbecue turkey sandwiches, pork brisket sandwiches, and portobello sandwiches, so like Sandwich Central. And that's great if you really love sandwiches, but with better barbecue offerings available nowadays like Regal Eagle Smokehouse and Epcot, these old offerings really dull in comparison. Now the setting here is charming and reminiscent of Disneyland's Golden Horseshoe Restaurant. There's a lot of history here and I just love this place for what it is. Once again though, it is kind of copying a restaurant look that existed before it. That being said, if for some reason you find yourself needing a last minute dining reservation, this sit down restaurant is usually available for booking. I can't tell you how long the Diamond Horseshoe will keep mirroring Liberty Tree Tavern's menu, but you know, at least it has better offerings than it used to, even if it's only temporary. Pros here is the menu that is similar, if not exactly the same, to Liberty Tree Tavern's, which is one of my favorite restaurants. There's also that fun Old West style dining room, very nostalgic, very historic for Walt Disney World, and last minute reservations are usually available for this table service restaurant, which hey, that is a pro. Cons, the menu change may be temporary. You never really know what you're gonna get, a diamond horseshoe and sometimes it's just plain closed so that inconsistency is a definite definite con also the menu might not be what you want it to be when you actually go so always double and triple check what the menu is going to be here before you book overall i'm going to give this place probably a six out of ten okay next we're going to talk friar's nook sometimes all you need is a bowl of tater tots or mac and cheese or bacon mac and cheese right and the friar's nook understands this 
This is kind of a park, counter service part kiosk located in Fantasyland that serves up a selection of tater tots like sausage and gravy tots for breakfast, creamy bacon mac and cheese tots, and tots with straight up plastic cheese sauce. It also has a few other savory options in the mix too, like sometimes there's bratwurst and stuff like that. In fact, they have listed on the Friars Nook brats and tots, which I love. Why would you not want to eat someplace that has brats and tots as their advertising, right? Okay, so the Friars Nook is a very solid choice for those looking for a quick breakfast before starting their morning around Fantasyland. And for tater top fans of all kinds. A quick warning, the seating here is extremely limited and it's all outdoors. And there's not really a lot of covered seating here. So you might have to carry your tots with you as you wander around the park. So pros here, tater tots, always a pro. Mac and cheese, always a pro. Bratwurst, always a pro. And it's affordable and yummy breakfast items too, which is sometimes hard to find in the Magic Kingdom. Cons, limited to no seating, that's a bummer. No indoor seating, no AC, can't get out of the elements. And it's not great for those looking for a quick dessert either. But overall, I'm gonna give Friars Nook a seven out of 10. It's one of those hidden gems for me. Very few people know about it, but now you do. Next on our list, Gaston's Tavern. Now you may have heard that no one snacks like Gaston, but that's a lie. I could give Gaston a run for his money with that one. Gaston's Tavern is part of New Fantasyland and is pretty hard to miss. Just look for the giant bronze fountain shaped like Gaston. Now, Bria's got a side note for you here that she saw a couple propose in front of this fountain once and she was really kind of confused about why you would propose in front of the Gaston fountain, but hey, to each their own, right? Now, there are three main reasons why you go to Gaston's Tavern for a snack. One, you go for the warm cinnamon roll for breakfast or whenever you get a hankering for a cinnamon roll because it really doesn't have to just be a breakfast thing, but just make sure you ask for that extra cup of icing and you can eat the cinnamon roll whenever you want. Two, you go for LeFou's Brew, which is a non-alcoholic beverage made of frozen apple juice with a hint of toasted marshmallow, or so they say, all topped with passion fruit mango foam. Sounds weird, but it's actually pretty good, and it's super unique to this park. Three, you go to see what's available seasonally. Currently, you'll find the Donald Duck Dome Cake, which came out recently in honor of the 50th anniversary celebration. Four, you go see why the gray stuff is delicious, since you already asked your dishes and they weren't talking back. The gray stuff cupcake has a chocolate base and is decorated with the famous gray stuff swirled on top, which is basically, by the way, like a cookies and cream panna cotta. And it is really delicious. But they've always got something special here for seasonal events. Now inside the tavern is kind of cool. It has a pub-like feel. This is obviously all Gaston's decorating. There's a big Gaston chair you can go sit in. There's a few tables in a couple of rooms that you can sit in so you've got some AC and some covered seating. So as long as you're not there on a super crowded day where there's literally not ever gonna be an open seat, this is a fun place to just kind of go relax for a little bit and chill and I don't know, maybe play a game of cards, right? With a cinnamon roll? Sure, why not? Pros here, a few good snacking options that are very, very exclusive to this location. You can't get them anywhere else and they're worth it. And it's great for those looking for a quick breakfast or a unique non-alcoholic beverage. Cons, not a whole lot of variety going on here. Not a great place to grab an actual meal. It's definitely snacks. But Gaston is telling me right now there are actually no cons whatsoever, so please disregard what I just said. Overall, gonna give this one a 7.5 out of 10. Okay, Golden Oak Outpost. Now this isn't the wildest food in the wilderness or anything, but it gets the job done. This is a little counter service kiosk that serves up a limited amount of treats and eats like the Slough Foot Sioux Fish Sandwich, which is brand new for the 50th anniversary, and fresh baked chocolate chunk cookies. Sometimes they have super cool topped seasoned fries here. Sometimes they've got onion rings with cheese sauce on them. Sometimes they've got chili cheese fries here. You never really know what's gonna pop up at Golden Oak and they change the menu based on how crowded and busy the park is. So you're gonna see more stuff here if it's more crowded in the park or they anticipate it to be more crowded in the park. We've seen a warm caramel stuffed pretzel here. We've seen sweet potato nuggets. So it's still worth checking the menu to see if there's a specialty item you're gonna to wanna to try. Otherwise, it's pretty straightforward. And it's not always open. There's several times during the year that it's just plain closed. So if this is what you wanna do, make sure you've got a plan B and C just in case. Pros here, menu is limited, but can be effective for what you need. And it's great for those who get overwhelmed by too many options. I guess that can be a pro. 
cons, it's not always open and there's very, very limited seating and it's all outdoors. Overall, I'm gonna give this one a six out of 10. Okay, next on our list is Jungle Navigation Company Limited Skipper Canteen. You probably noticed a common theme going on with all these Magic Kingdom restaurants and snack locations. The majority of them cater to pickier eaters. But if you're looking for the best adventurous dining option in the Magic Kingdom, then what better place to search for it than Adventureland itself? Skipper Canteen is a table service restaurant themed around the classic Jungle Cruise attraction, which in turn connects to the whole underground society of explorers and adventurers storyline that quietly weaves itself throughout the Disney parks worldwide. I'll link our post about the SEA in the description below so you can learn more about it. It's really fascinating stuff, super fun. You don't need to know the backstory to appreciate Skipper Canteen, but it does add to the theme and you can look like a super smart Disney nerd if you tell your family about the SEA. Now, not only is this restaurant an immersive extension of one of our favorite Adventureland attractions, but it also has very interesting dishes to choose from, at least interesting for a theme park. Now, a few of our favorites include the Falls Family Falafel, which is as fun to say as it is to eat. The hearty hard char siu pork with a sweet tasting barbecue glaze across the meat and the panaconis Congo lime delight. Listen, I'm obsessed with the names on this menu. The menu is really funny too, by the way. There's like funny jokes all the way through it and they're too clever for their own good. It's just like riding the Jungle Cruise, except you're at a restaurant. Not to mention there's a secret menu here with specialty drinks and eats. And you can learn more about that in our updated ultimate secret menus in Disney World post on the DFB website. We've also got an ultimate secret menus video around here somewhere. So we'll link those for you too. Now I'm definitely on Team Skipper Canteen here. It's a fun and different environment with a variety of unique food. Just make sure to let any of your pickier eaters look over the menu beforehand. There are plenty of other places in Magic Kingdom that are more than willing to cater to a palate that prefers fries over falafel. Pros here, best for adventurous dining. It's great great theming, it tells a story, there's lots of fun dining rooms to sit in, and there's a fun selection of secret menu items. Cons, well, it's not the best for picky eaters, like we said, takes a chunk of time out of your day to experience just because it's a table service restaurant, and there's no outdoor dining just in case you want to enjoy the lovely day outside. This is all indoors, and the windows are actually all glazed over, so you're not actually going to see much through those windows anyway. But I really like this restaurant, it's one of my favorites. Overall, I'm going to give this one a 9 out of 10. Okay, Liberty Square Market. Hear ye, hear ye. Come thou forth to thine Liberty Square Market for fast fare and snackages. Okay, there's no such word as snackages, so don't don't go say it anywhere. Anyway, the Liberty Square Market is a snack cart, mostly stocked with items you can purchase outside the parks, like trail mix, gummy bears, apple slices, you know, grocery store stuff. If you forgot your kiddos' snacks back at the hotel or you forgot to pack them in general, then it's nice to know snack carts like this exist to help satisfy your tiny tyke in a jiffy or you. Now, every single Disney park has a place like this that has fresh fruit or kind of healthier snacks, maybe snacks on the healthier side. I don't know. I can't vouch for all the snacks here, but this is Magic Kingdom's location for that fresh fruit and stuff like that. Now, you're absolutely going to pay inflated prices for that fresh fruit, so just be aware of that, and I can't necessarily vouch for the quality of it either. Sometimes it's great, sometimes it's not. Now, this cart also does serve turkey legs and Mickey pretzels after 11 a.m., so there's a little more substance for but overall, this is just going to be a snack stop. Nothing that's destination worthy. Pros here, great for those who forgot to pack their snacks in their park bag for the day and are looking for a quick fix or maybe something a little bit healthier. Cons, not much else going on here. Not the location you want to hit up if you're looking for unique eats. So overall, we're going to give this one a 5 out of 10. But it is nice to know there's a place to get fresh fruit while you're in Magic Kingdom. Now, Liberty Tree Tavern is next, and this is my favorite restaurant to eat at in Magic Kingdom. No joke. I could stop the video here and proclaim this place as the creme de la creme of Magic Kingdom dining, but I won't because not all of you agree with me. And there are other restaurants out there that I'm aware you may like more, especially if you're not a fan of super heavy meals in the middle of a hot Orlando day like this one. So why do I love this Liberty Square table service restaurant with the 18th century homey vibes so much? Well, because of the family style Patriots platter. The Patriots platter serves roast turkey breast, pot roast, oven roasted pork, mashed potatoes, seasonal vegetables, herb stuffing, and house made mac and cheese. Comfort food to the max. It also has one of my very, very favorite desserts in Disney World, the ooey gooey toffee cake. 
it's made of magic. I don't even know. I'm sure that it's more than the sum of its parts, but it's basically like a super gooey chocolate chip cookie topped with ice cream and caramel and chocolate. And it's so, so, so good. I don't know why it's good. I don't know, but it is so good. So if you love Thanksgiving food, guess what? You can celebrate Thanksgiving at Liberty Tree Tavern all year long. Plus, this place is a super huge learning experience for everybody in your party. Each individual room is themed after a Revolutionary War personality. So you've got George Washington, Ben Franklin, John Paul Jones. So there's lots of learning to be done here, moms and dads. Lots of learning. All right, pros, a lot of food. It is all you can eat. And you are not going to need to eat again after you eat here. It's also great for picky eaters. I mean, all you can eat mac and cheese, done and done. And it can be available for last minute reservations on not too busy days. Cons, not great for those who don't want to eat a super heavy Thanksgiving meal on a hot park day. I don't know why you wouldn't, but I get it. Some of you don't want to. And there's no like super adventurous options here. It is pretty much what you see is what you get and everybody has to eat the same food. And of course, it's a table service meal. So it takes time out of your park day to experience. Now, I want to give this a 10 out of 10, but I understand that I am biased because I absolutely love this restaurant. So I'm going to give it a 9.5 out of 10. What do you think? That's safe, right? That's fair. Okay. Okay, the lunching pad. The lunching pad may look like your average snack location in Tomorrowland, and yep, that's what it is. For the most part, you're going to find your basic pretzel and hot dog options here, but you're also going to find the beautiful and talented cream cheese warm stuffed pretzel when it's available, which if you're looking for a unique pretzel noshing experience, then the lunching pad could be worth a stop. Heads up, here's a DFB tip. You can usually get that cream cheese pretzel at the Wawa gas stations too in Florida, so there you go. Now you can also grab an order of the If You Had Wings, aka Caribbean Jerk Chicken Strips, which we've really enjoyed chowing down on in the past. Those are 50th anniversary editions, so you never know how long they're going to be around. And of course, they harken back to the If You Had Wings attraction that was here in Magic Kingdom. Now, you're only going to find outdoor seating at this location, but it can still be a nice place to sit if you're trying to duck out and away from an Orlando rainstorm, since the seating area is somewhat canopied by the loading area for the Tomorrowland Transit Authority People Mover located directly above. Now, here are the pros here. A few surprisingly unique savory options in the mix and the canopied outdoor seating area. Cons here, nearby stroller area can get pretty congested. Seating is limited, especially during rainstorms and peak meal times. And there's just not a lot of variety here. So this is probably not destination worthy necessarily unless they have a specialty item. Overall, this is gonna be about a six out of 10. Headed over to the Main Street Bakery. Now don't be confusing the Main Street Bakery with the Main Street Confectionery. Main Street Confectionery is an old fashioned candy shop with custom treats and happiness abounds there. The Main Street Bakery is a Starbucks and a Starbucks Starbucks location equals what? Say it with me, really long lines. Granted, there are a few Disney World specific snacks in the bakery cases here, like the Mickey cinnamon roll and a variety of seasonal options. But if you're here for the caffeine fix only, remember that there are several other locations around the park that can get the job done for you with a much shorter line. Is it the box? No, it's not the box, but it's good coffee either way. So pros in this one, best for those needing their Starbucks fix and seasonal bakery items are served here as well. Cons, very, very long lines, especially in the morning. I will never understand why people pay a bunch of money to go to Disney World and then stand in line for Starbucks for an hour. Why? Why does that even happen? Why does that happen? Anyway, overall, I'm going to give this one a 5.5 out of 10, which breaks my heart because the Main Street Bakery used to be one of my favorite places to go because it had a bunch of unique Magic Kingdom only treats, which was awesome. And now it's just basically a Starbucks with a couple of Mickey shaped cinnamon rolls. All right, next on our list is Pecos Bill Tall Tale Inn and Cafe. A lot of people refer to this as just Pecos Bills, but it's not, it's Pecos Bill Tall Tale Inn and Cafe. There's a little tip for you. Did you ever find yourself wandering around Frontierland thinking, man, I could really go for some Chipotle right now? Well, then Pecos Bill Tall Tale Inn and Cafe is the closest you're gonna get. <laughs> this rather spacious quick service location serves a bunch of Southwest style dishes like fajita platters, beef nachos, chicken nachos, veggie rice bowls. And there's also random 
only a bacon cheeseburger here usually in case you were that one person in your group that didn't want Mexican food or you got outvoted by a landslide. Once upon a time, Pecos Bill used to offer up the miles-long topping bar, but ever since the 2020 park closures, it's remained unavailable. Still, you can request any additional toppings you'd like, including that wonderful cheesy queso sauce, which can be included for an added cost. They do have white queso here, which I love. The food here is fine. Are you going to find an authentic Mexican cuisine option? No. Are you going to walk away going, okay, that was probably better than the fast food tacos I had back home last week? Maybe. So it's a solid choice if you're looking to escape the crowds and the heat for a little bit while also chowing down on some quick and tasty nachos and fajitas. Pros, best for those looking for non-spicy Southwest inspired options. That's right. The spice here is Disney spice. It's not real world spice. Also, there's a big dining room, lots of places to sit, lots of air conditioned potential. And there's lots of toppings to order here. Everything used to be free, now it costs extra, but hey, at least you can get them. Cons, this is not gonna be great for those looking for an authentic Mexican meal, of course. Also not great for those looking for fancy schmancy dining. Now the food is okay. Sometimes we get items that are a little less than desirable, like soggy nachos, but they do all right. So overall, I'm gonna give Pecos Bills six out of 10. Next is Pinocchio Village House. Disney World pizzas and flatbreads are hit or miss. And Pinocchio Village House is mostly a miss, mostly. But why do I say mostly? Well, because I probably still prefer the Pinocchio Village House flatbreads over those giant pillowy pizzas that are served at Pizza Fari and Disney's Animal Kingdom and Pizza Rizzo and Hollywood Studios. But the flatbreads at this Fantasyland quick service spot still aren't fabulous. They're basically just fast food pizzas. So does that mean you need to skip Pinocchio's? Not necessarily. For starters, the Pinocchio artwork painted on the walls is lovely. And there's a cool seating area where you can see the It's a Small World boats floating by on those cruises. There's also a cool seating area upstairs, but it's teeny tiny. It's on a balcony and it's really, really awesome, but nobody knows about it. So that's a cool place to go and sit and chill and enjoy the outside. Plus, I will say they do have other menu items besides flatbreads. There's other stuff on the menu, you can get all their stuff, but it's just gonna be standard kind of fast food fare. And Pinocchio actually impressed us the other day with its brand new 50th anniversary Croque Monsieur flatbread. So, you know, there's hope for Pinocchio yet. All in all, this isn't the worst place to eat in Magic Kingdom, especially if you have picky eaters or pizza lovers, but there are definitely other better fast food options at Magic Kingdom that you can choose from, like Columbia Harbor House. Do I need to say it again? Probably not. Okay, pros. Good choice for picky eaters, like most places in Magic Kingdom. Gorgeous artwork and fun window view of Small World. You got that secret seating area upstairs and cheap and quick mobile order. Cons, pizza is mediocre. Not great for those who aren't craving a fast food pizza and the restaurant can get kind of hectic and stressful during peak dining times. So I'm gonna give Pinocchio a 6.5 out of 10. Next on our list is the Plaza Ice Cream Parlor. Now, I've already mentioned quite a few ice cream locations in this video, so here's another one to add to the list. Magic Kingdom really loves their ice cream. They know you guys love it too. Once upon a time, this vintage style ice cream parlor would be hands down my favorite place to get a cold treat, and I still love it, I really do. But a lot of those more unique creations it used to serve up, like the All-American Sundae with peanut butter and the cookies and cream ice cream sandwiches aren't featured on the menu anymore. Nowadays, Plaza Ice Cream Parlor still serves that Edie's brand ice cream and it's still a great option for those who want a simple and delicious ice cream treat including sundaes and ice cream cookie sandwiches close to Cinderella Castle. Pros, the ice cream is fine, it's good, it's 80s, you know, it's brand name, it's good stuff and once in a while they'll have some specialty flavors and it's great for those looking for an Instagrammable snack near the castle. Cons, more limited menu than before and very limited seating. You've just got those outdoor seats that are kind of across from the plaza restaurant and those fill up pretty quickly on nice days. But if you want a classic hand scooped ice cream sundae, this is the place to get it in the Magic Kingdom. This one, we're gonna rank a 7.5 out of 10. All right, heading next door to the Plaza restaurant. The Plaza located on Main Street USA is a table service restaurant with that turn of the century charm. There aren't a whole lot of options on this recently revamped menu, but the options that are here are all cozy comfort foods like meatloaf and chili, loaded fries, fried chicken. This probably won't be a meal you're gonna wanna tell your diary about after, but maybe it will if you love comfort food, but it is one that's gonna leave you satisfied and full, and it's one of the more budget-friendly table service restaurants in Disney World. So pros here, tasty comfort foods, charming and cozy, and best for affordable table service locations. Cons, not a standout meal, but a good meal nonetheless. It's not gonna be the best for more adventurous eaters, and it's a little too cozy sometimes. It's really small in there and can feel real cramped when 
when it's busy, especially if you're just a two person party and they sit you at that banquette seating where you're basically eating with the people on either side of you. Yeah, that can get kind of frustrating and annoying. I'm going to say it. But overall, I really do like the plaza and the fact that it's relatively affordable means I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. Next, we've got Prince Eric's Village Market. Turkey legs, jumbo pretzels, pickles in a bag. What do these three things have in common? Well, they're all sold at Prince Eric's in New Fantasyland. This is a kiosk that's pretty easy to miss, but it's very close to the entrance of Under the Sea Journey of the Little Mermaid. Fitting, right? The only item that really stands out at this location currently is the mermaid slush, which is made with frozen blue raspberry and frozen green apple slushy. It's topped with whipped cream and a candy mermaid tail. Now, this drink is super sweet, but can be a fun afternoon drink for kiddos. And you might also find a few other seasonal dishes that pop up here on this menu, but nothing ever sticks around for a super long time. So keep an eye on DFB to know when stuff does come over to Prince Eric's. Pros here, turkey legs, if that's a pro for you, and reliable place for a quick standard snack. Cons here, turkey legs, if that's a con for you, and it's very easy to overlook. Now, note that this place isn't always open, so you may end up at a loss for your turkey leg if you try to head over to Prince Eric's and they're closed. Overall, I'm gonna give this a five out of 10. Okay, heading over to Sleepy Hollow Refreshments, which is definitely not a five out of 10. This place might be called Sleepy Hollow Refreshments, but don't go sleeping on it. If you follow our DFB social media pages like TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, you'll probably see the fresh fruit waffle from Sleepy Hollow show up quite a bit because it's tantalizing. There's strawberries, bananas, blueberries, look at all that fruit, and the chocolate hazelnut spread on a waffle, which is incredible. Now, if you need something more on the savory side of things, you can also try the sweet and spicy chicken waffle sandwich here. And if you're one of the select turkey leg fans in the world, you can get turkey legs here too, but only after around 7 p.m. The Liberty Square counter service location has a menu of tasty shareable treats that you can easily make into a full meal for yourself, but the outdoor seating is very limited here. You may have to stake out a table on the other side of the building if any are available, because these waffle sandwiches, they are very hard to eat on the go. So pros here, tasty waffle sammies as well as other things funnel cakes there's always seasonal treats here and anytime you're at a special event in magic kingdom there's going to be something here to try it also serves traditional theme park items turkey legs funnel cakes sometimes they've got corn dogs and stuff like that Cons, limited seating, and it's all outdoors, so there's no AC. And some items are only served during certain parts of the day, like the fresh fruit waffle sandwich. That's only in the morning until 11 a.m. The sweet and spicy chicken waffle sandwich is served after 11 a.m. and on. So there are specific time frames to get stuff here too, which is kind of confusing. Overall though, I'm gonna give this one a nine out of 10. Moving on to storybook treats. Welcome to Fantasyland's soft serve ice cream spot. At this counter service location, you'll see specialty ice creams and Dole Whip flavors come and go. While recording this, Storybook Treats currently has the Seven Dwarfs specialty cones, as well as the 50th anniversary Snow White cone with lemon Dole Whip and a blue cone and a little chocolate bow and a bird. So there's a lot of good options here right now. And this isn't the place to go if you're looking for a hearty meal or even a not hearty meal for that matter. There's nothing here, but right next door is Friar's Nook, which we already told you about. And if you need a cool treat on a hot Orlando day, Storybook Treats has got your back. Pros here, rotating list of specialty soft serve and Dole Whip and great for those looking for limited edition ice cream flavors. Cons, no savory options available, but remember, Friar's Nook is right next door and not the location for dining. There's just snacks here. But overall, I'm gonna give this a 7.5 out of 10 because they surprise us pretty regularly with good stuff. Okay, next is Sunshine Tree Terrace. And if you're part of the unofficial Orange Bird fan club, which is so totally a thing, or at least it should be, then you owe it to yourself to swing by the Orange Bird's original home, which just so happens to be this Adventureland counter service location. Location. Sunshine Tree Terrace is one of two locations that serves up a variety of Dole Whip and Dole Whip float options in Adventureland, including the I Lava You float with, with Fanta Strawberry Soda, Passion Fruit Syrup, Orange Dole Whip, and Popping Candy Sprinkles. Now, we're also huge fans of the Citrus Swirl here, which is soft serve vanilla ice cream swirled with frozen orange juice. However, this item keeps disappearing on us lately, so keep your eyes on the Sunshine Tree Terrace menu if this is an item you're interested in trying, because it could be here one minute and gone from our lives the next. This has happened multiple times over Disney World's history. Someday, I'll do a whole video on the history of that citrus swirl, because it's had a rocky one. This kiosk also has pot stickers, random, right? But there you go. If you've ever had a pot sticker before, you've basically tried these. They're not super special or anything, but they are a nice savory addition to have on the side of a sweeter fruity treat. Pros for Sunshine Tree Terrace, Dole Whips, 
everywhere, and the savory pot stickers randomly offered to counter the sweet. Cons, the citrus swirl is elusive and might not be there when you're there, and it's also not great for those looking for a variety of savory treats. Also, there's no seating anywhere, pretty much. So overall, we're gonna give this one an eight out of 10. I wanna give it a 10 out of 10 because I love Sunshine Tree Terrace and I love the citrus swirl, but because the citrus swirl's not there and there's no seating and et cetera, et cetera, I'm gonna give it an eight out of 10. I know, I know, we, were gonna, we are gonna have to argue about this later. Okay, Tomorrowland Terrace Restaurant. Currently, the Tomorrowland Terrace Restaurant is closed, which is not unusual for this location. Tomorrowland Terrace is usually only open during Magic Kingdom's peak season, though nowadays peak season feels like every season, but that's a topic for another day. While Columbia Harbor House was temporarily unavailable, Tomorrowland Terrace took a lot of Columbia's options under its wing so guests could still get their surf and turf fix. And it also held the Cheshire Cattail Pastry while Cheshire Cafe was temporarily closed. So... Basically, this spot is the catch-all, fostering other quick service menu items during their times of need. Otherwise, Tomorrowland Terrace serves pretty basic theme park food when it's open. Though the restaurant is closed at the moment, you can still manage to eat on the Tomorrowland Terrace balcony with that stunning view of Cinderella Castle when you book one of the fireworks dessert parties in Magic Kingdom. So pros, when it is open, there's pretty good stuff here, and it's best for those wanting to obviously experience a fireworks dessert party, which you need to book in advance. Cons, it's rarely ever open, and nothing really unique is served here. Another thing to note is that when this is open, all of the seating is outdoors. It's covered, but it's outdoors, so you're not going to get a huge blast of AC dining here. Overall, I'm going to give Tomorrowland Terrace a 6 out of 10. Next on the list is Tony's Town Square Restaurant. We really want to love you, Tony's. We really do. We try every year to love you, and it just doesn't work out. Tony's Town Square Restaurant is right up front when you first enter Main Street, USA. This is a Lady and the Tramp themed Italian table service restaurant, which is why I want to love this place. I love Lady and the Tramp and I love Italian food, but this ain't it. I found the pastas and salads I've ordered here in the past are either super salty or just completely bland. Everything sort of tastes like it's been heated up from frozen, which maybe it has, but for the prices they're charging, it should taste better than this. And this restaurant is really lovely though. I adore all the different Lady and the Tramp essences around the dining room. Plus, if you like fairly simple Italian cuisine, like you might find back home at a chain restaurant, then you and your group might enjoy this place more than I do. I just think right now this food is overpriced when really it's kind of the same stuff you're going to get at a fast food Italian location. So pros here, best for Lady and the Tramp fans, and it's relatively easy to get a reservation for. Cons, it's expensive and the pasta quality is substandard. So overall, we're going to give Tony's a 5.5 out of 10. Next on the list is Tortuga Tavern. How do we rate a quick service that's rarely ever open? So Tortuga is an adventure land and has a pretty basic selection of menu items, except when it doesn't. Every once in a while, it will pop up with a totally out of the blue thing like the peanut butter, chocolate, hazelnut spread, and banana sandwich. So peanut butter, Nutella, and banana sandwich. What? Why? Okay, that makes sense in a pirate themed restaurant. Anyway, sometimes, let's say all the time, Tortuga Tavern's probably gonna surprise you by being open in the first place and by having pretty weird stuff on the menu. Now, when it doesn't have weird stuff on the menu, it's pretty much just like hot dogs, turkey legs. Sometimes they have a couple of dishes that are sort of aimed at a pirate theme, like they have a sticky toffee pudding with kind of like a rum vibe going on. And once in a while, they have like a barbecue brisket situation. But like I said, it's never open anyway, so who cares? But the good thing about this place is when it is open, it's super close to a lot of adventure land attractions like Pirates of the Caribbean, Jungle Cruise, and Enchanted Tiki Room. So you can grab a quick meal here when it's open and head on over to a ride or a show right after. Pros, good for those looking for something quick to eat before riding more rides. And it occasionally has those unique menu options. Cons, it's rarely ever open. And when it is, it's usually just standard theme park fare. The seating here, by the way, is mostly outdoors. There is some indoor seating and all the outdoor seating is covered. So that's good too. Overall, we're gonna give this one a five out of 10. Okay, Westward Ho. Westward Ho is a counter service location in Frontierland. It's kind of a key ask really more than counter service. It's not like a fast food restaurant or anything. And it serves up quick snacks for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Now don't let this little cabin-like kiosk fool you. It's actually got some unique options like the candied bacon skewer and Wendell's bear claw, which is a traditional bear claw pastry dipped in chocolate and dusted with crushed hazelnuts. This is also one of the locations for my beloved corn
corn dog nuggets sometimes. And one more quick thing about Westward Ho, because as I talk about it, I realize that I highly respect it, even more than I originally thought I did. If you're intimidated by the Starbucks line on Main Street USA, then come on over here instead. Not only can you get a cold brew coffee at Westward Ho, but you can also add your choice of flavor. And depending on the season, you can add limited edition flavors too. So pros here, little kiosk, surprising variety, and a good alternative for Starbucks if the line at Main Street Bakery is just out the door. Cons, very much a snack location. Don't plan to eat a big meal here or anything. There's no seating, and this is a take it and go location. So overall, we're gonna give this one a seven out of 10. So there we've got it, all the Magic Kingdom restaurants and their rankings. I know, I know, super impressive. Thank you for the standing ovation. <laughs> I know, it's been like forever and a day since I last mentioned this because we've talked about so many restaurants since then. What an adventure we have been on. But don't forget that you can access a digital PDF of this entire list over at DisneyFoodBlog.com slash EveryMK. <laughs> anyway, we hope this helped you plan out what you're going to eat in Magic Kingdom. As always, don't forget that we've got our DFB guide to Walt Disney World Dining, which is a huge, huge, huge ebook that has everything I know in it. <laughs> tons of information, tons of details, lots of surprises and tips and tricks for your planning. Head on over to dfbstore.com to pick up that book. And don't forget to use code YouTube for a discount. That book, by the way, has a 100% money back guarantee. If you don't love it, that's fine. Let us know and we'll give you your money back. Thanks for listening, everyone, and thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.